All right, good morning. Good morning. Um, I don't know what the program says I'm going to talk about, but I'm not talking about that. This is one of those. So um, <clears throat> I just didn't have any energy on that, so this is uh, what came to me. Um, have you ever heard the expression that time does not stand still? Yeah, sure. Time does not stand still, and neither does our consciousness. Um, I don't think there is any idling. You know, as each of us are a spiritual being, we're here to, to love, to grow, to express, to uh, celebrate, to create. Right? And so when I think in terms of uh, progress, I think of a movement toward um, a greater expression of life, a movement toward some desired end. You know, living life in the direction that we want to experience more of. I think it involves going into the unknown to some degree, and it may be things that we've never even done before. So to progress, I think, often involves going out um, on the skinny branches of life. Now, if you'll remember back when you were a kid, I'm sure everybody here climbed a tree at some point, uh, that when you're a kid, you know, when you start to climb a tree, you realize very early on that it's safest in close to the trunk of the tree, right? Because the trunk of the tree is really solid, you know? So even if it's a little windy, you're not swaying too much. But the interesting thing is that where it gets really interesting is out on the skinny branches. Part of why it's interesting out on the skinny branches is that's where the growth is, you know? Not just the growth for us, but if you're climbing an orange tree or something, that the growth doesn't happen in close to the trunk. The growth always happens out, way out on the skinny branches, and I think that's true for us as well. Um, you know, if, we, um, if we're not moving forward, because I think that's the general tendency of life, the principle of life within us is always trying to move forward into greater creativity, greater love, greater abundance, greater health, if we're not moving forward, I think that we are actually regressing. There is no idle. There's no neutral. You know, that to regress means that we fall back or backslide. It's about the past when we regress, perhaps being comfortable or familiar with what the status quo has been. But I think progress and advancement and improvement and forward movement, this is actually the nature of the Spirit of God within each and every one of us. The way we always say it is that spirit is always seeking a fuller and greater expression of itself. How does that fuller and greater expression happen? By means of us, by means of our lives. So um, when I was uh, in college uh, back east, um, I went with a couple of friends. We went up, they, a friend's family had a house in uh, Kennebunkport, Maine. And you know who lives in Kennebunkport. Uh, and so we went out in this little tiny sailboat. And it was beautiful. It was a beautiful, beautiful day, and there was a little bit of wind, and we were really just moving along very, very nicely. And then the wind completely died. It, it does that, it just stopped. And, uh, and so we had a little tiny gas engine. And so we used the gas engine and we're just chugging along the coast a little bit, and then we ran out of gas. And right about that time, we were in front of President Bush's home in Kenny Bunkport, which was up on a hill, on a cliff. And, and we're just, you know, kind of just chugging along there, waiting for the wind, going with the lapping of the waves, you know, like this. My two friends got really, really seasick. And, 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 I was, and I was the big landlubber here, I want you to know. Uh, I just didn't have the good sense to get seasick. I guess that's what it was. So they're both heaving over the sides. And, um, and, and I'm like, well, I don't know what to do about any of this. I do not know what to do about any of this. But come up high on the cliff there, come all these men in suits and sunglasses. Yeah. With these little earpieces that they're talking into. And, uh, and I started to get a little bit nervous. You know, so, um, so I, I, you know, what do you do when you're nervous? You sing, right? You know, so, so I started to sing, and I'm waving and singing, and it's like, please don't shoot us. Um, I believe that, uh, so we were fine. We were fine. Uh, what happened eventually is another boat came along, and we had the canned noise, and they, uh, they took me in their boat to get a little more gasoline so we could go back to where we came from. And, uh, and as soon as we did, the security disappeared back uh, toward the house. Um, why was I telling you that? <laughs> I don't know. I had a reason for that. I swear I did. But anyway, so I left, 
I believe that consciousness, the, the, the spirit that we are, is always seeking a fuller and greater expression of itself. I think we must always progress, right? There is no standing still. And I know sometimes we think, oh, can I just rest for a while? Can I just relax? Can I take a decade off? Or something like that, you know? And to, to think so is just, is, it's not accurate. It's not accurate for how I believe life is, because life is always for forward movement. We say, well, can't things just be the way they were? Can't I just rest? No, no, things can never be the way they were. Bread will never be a nickel again. You know, and you know, and, and you don't have to go milk your own cows anymore. Aren't you grateful? Things will never be the way they used to be. I love progress, really, I do. You say people say, oh, but life was so good then. Yes, it was, if you say so. You know, and, and you know, and that's why it's important to be fully there when you're there, to be fully present in the moment, right? Because now is the time you're going to look back on in the future and say, this was so good. And you don't want to miss it, do you? Absolutely not. You know, we want to not be too far in the future. We don't want to be too far in the past. We need to be present to experience what life is offering us right, right now. And so I think progress is about being fully present. You know, we will not have this time again. You know, we're not going to have today again. So we must make the most of it. Perhaps we'll maybe, we might not meet the people that we have met again. You know, or the opportunities that come to us. They may not come around again. You know, when you're young, an opportunity comes around, you think, oh, this will happen again and again and again. And then you realize, mm, not so much. Not so much. It's not necessarily so. So I have to be conscious as conscious as I possibly can be. Because spirit that we are has to move forward. It has to create. Hmm? So I, I know that what stops most of us is fear. Absolutely. You know, that, that I don't want to keep stretching and growing because at some point I hit the wall of my comfort zone and beyond that is fear. Right? That I want a break. I want a respite. I want a little time out. But life says no. And I say, but I'm tired. And say, you're tired because you're not in shape, spiritual shape, right? So you've got to pick up your feet and move in the direction of progress, and then we won't be tired. Because you know what? Isn't it interesting how as soon as we start to make forward movement and we can see, oh, good will come from this, good, the, the tiredness always disappears. See, in the science of mind, we talk a lot about how we're responsible for our own healing, the healing of our thoughts, healing of our beliefs, healing of our crazy patterns, whatever that is. You know, if your relationship with somebody is bad, where that has to change is within you, right? They're doing exactly what they need to be doing. But I would say to you, are you praying? Are you affirming? Are you blessing them every day? Are you forgiving yourself as well as them every single day? You say, well, I, people say to me, well, I did a prayer, I did a treatment, but it didn't get any better. They didn't change. Well, that's the problem right there, okay? That we have to keep praying daily, several times a day. Bless them every time they come into your awareness. I bless you. I forgive you. I bless you. I forgive you. Praise them. Behold God in them. You know, you've heard about regression therapy. Now, I don't know an awful lot about that, but the idea, I think, is that you go back to something that was before, and I'm sure this can be valuable, but you don't want to get stuck there in the evidence of the past so that it limits your present and your future. You know, because now, like Louise Hay used to always say, now is the point of power. This moment is when you can do something about it, whatever it is. Whether it's a relationship or your health or your finances. People will say, well, you know, I, I really abused money in a past life. Or I had lots of wild affairs in ancient Rome. So now I have a hard time with money or relationships. I think this is not fully accurate. Um, <laughs> And uh, because Ernest Holmes teaches this concept of our soul is on a journey and that journey is on an upward spiral. So right now you are the most evolved, you are the most aware, you are the most awake, the most conscious your soul has ever, ever been is you right now. 
All right? So the point is, all right, so if those things happened in the past, just learn from them and move on. You are not bound by them. Ernest teaches us in the textbook that principle is not bound by precedent. So if you work with spiritual principles, you will certainly move forward. You will absolutely progress. What happened in the past does not dictate your future. Isn't that good news for all of us? I think that is just positively thrilling, that my past has nothing to do with what my future looks like unless I keep dragging it forward. Yeah. So if anyone or anything is holding you back, the good news, I know it doesn't sound good at first, but the good news is that it's you. All right? Because if it's someone outside of you, you don't stand a chance of doing anything about it. But if what's holding you back is something within you, some belief or some idea or some old habit or some old way of being or some voice in your head from long, long ago that was in some way limiting you or diminishing you, you know, that, that's, uh, the good news is that that can change. If it's outside of you, we can't do anything about that. But if it's inside, I can work on changing my thinking. I can work on changing the content of my heart. I can work on changing how I'm being toward other people in the world. See, it's easier to break a bad habit if you keep focused on what you're adding to your life rather than what you're taking away. How many of us have ever tried to break what we call a bad habit? Ah, eh, yeah, danced with it again and again and again and again. But when you start to look more on, when you focus more on what you're moving toward rather than what you're moving away from, you know, I'm amazed when people tell me that they're bored. Bored? I think bored? How can you be bored in 2018? I can't imagine. I honestly don't think I've been bored since maybe junior high school or even before that, you know, because there's so much potential to expand and explore and grow. There's so much to be interested in. You know, I mean, I look at a, I look at a course catalog from a college, and honest to God, every department has something that interests me. Like, I could, I, I could, I could be in class constantly. Constantly, I'd never get any work done, but I could constantly be in class, you know. And so if you think of your life like an artist, that you're like an artist, you're, and the art is your life. Right? And as an artist has to progress. You know, a vital relationship has to progress. You know, um, some famous artist said that the biggest temptation is to repeat your success. You know? And so it is, I think, with our own daily spiritual practice that we have to progress in our thinking and our speaking. You know, we want to practice uh, verbal and mental harmlessness, you know, that the idea is to do no harm. I can't live off of yesterday's realization of truth. I have to do my best spiritual work today, you know. Uh, so the idea, we've all heard this phrase, is to die daily, but what we're dying daily to is the old mortal me. You know, the notion that I, that, uh, that I am somehow limited, um, or the notion of, oh, life has to be this particular way, um, see, this is where that idea of truth makes us free. When we entertain thoughts of spiritual truth, you know, that's like adding the light to the darkness. And the darkness doesn't argue with the light. The darkness just disappears. So, so what is the truth? The truth is that we are good. The truth is that every single person here is lovable, that we are creative. That we, we have everything to do with how we experience or with what and how we experience life. So perhaps one of the perils of living in a fast-paced society is that we tend to transfer that quick pace to our spirituality and our spiritual progress. You know, we want to be enlightened in 30 minutes. You know, and it's got to happen. Let's see, I have a break on Thursday between 2 and 3. That would be the perfect time. You know, it's got to happen right then. You know, we, we, we want to see the healing yesterday, right? Don't we? You know, we want greater creation uh, and I want it to be complete in two minutes, you know, uh, when the buzzer goes off. Um, and if it's not total transformation, we're annoyed when we have to push reset for another minute or two. Right? So um, I just think that that's, uh, that's how we live now, but I don't think, like many important, valuable things, that that's how it works. You know, um, we have not come up with a way to make a baby grow inside of wom a woman faster, you know, probably for really good reason. You know, it takes as long as it takes for plants to grow and eventually give us beautiful flowers or fruit. I mean, and, and consciousness is no different than that. It takes time and consistent effort for our consciousness to change from a deep place within us so that we can have a different experience 
in the world. So you know the, one of the early founders of the metaphysical movement, uh, they had a different approach than we seem to have. Joel Goldsmith is an author who I really like, um, and uh, he was a contemporary of Ernest Holmes. Uh, his teaching was a little bit different, but his, his method was to stop two, four, six times a day just for a few minutes. How many minutes? Well, like we did in church. We meditate for five minutes here. And he says, you know, you start with two or three minutes. And you just take those two or three minutes and you remember that you're connected with something greater. It doesn't have to be a big production. You don't have to light the incense and the candles and the bells and all that stuff. You just sit for just two minutes, just two minutes. Now, if you like to do the incense and the bells, that's great. Have at it, you know. But for two minutes to just stop, remember that you're connected, and then go on with your life. And you might do that again an hour or a couple hours later, again and again and again. Emma Curtis Hopkins uh, uh, told a client, uh, Emma is also one of our teachers. Uh, she was Ernest's teacher. Uh, she had a client who had this... Um, Tremendous curvature of the spine. And she said to the person, she said, you can be healed, but you'll have to move in with me for two weeks. Right? So I read that and I thought, okay, well, what's that about? Because she, because she knew for that person to have that kind of physical healing, they were going to have to be completely immersed in a different consciousness. They couldn't keep going home to their old consciousness, right, because nothing would physically change for them. But Emma's consciousness was really good, and she knew her consciousness was good. And so if you wanted to heal that curvature of the spine, you needed to live with her. And in that mental atmosphere, in that environment, healing could take place because there wasn't all the other stuff that would contradict it, all the disbelief, all the doubt, all the fear. See, this is a way of life for us, and we have to commit to it totally. I wonder, you know, if we, if we jump in and demand our healing instantly, you know, that if that sometimes doesn't, I don't know, sometimes I think it, it makes things worse because that might be opening Pandora's box to a whole lot of new troubles when we could actually make things, we could make things worse without a deep foundation of prayer, affirmative prayer, without, uh, without building a sufficient foundation of faith for ourselves. Because what happens is if we haven't done that, we take a step and then we, boom, we go right down. See, so progress can be slow, but every prayer that we do absolutely makes, makes a difference. Every time we affirm, every time we meditate. See, because we're dealing with an invisible quality that doesn't progress like things in the outer world. You know, we're dealing with an inner phenomenon that's not bound by time or space. You know, the Hindu scriptures say, Thou canst not see me with two outer eyes. I have given you an eye divine. Mm -hmm. and, and, I, and I like that because it says, okay, my regular senses are not going to perceive this. It's going to come from a deeper place within me that I'm going to know that there is something greater. Ernest Holmes in our textbook says that intuition is God in humankind. Right? And so if you want to measure your progress, I think, I, I think all right, you have to look with, with intuition, with wisdom, because you cannot measure your spiritual progress with an outer eye. Mm -hmm. So... When you get quiet, you say, okay, am I better than I used to be? Am I more patient? Am I more loving? Am I doing less harm in the world? Am I a kinder person in my interactions with other people? Am I moving closer to expressing what I believe I'm here to express in the world? Why is this so? Because I think there's danger when you measure your progress only with the outer eye. You know, looking for signs outside of yourself, you're going to fall prey to comparison, right? And I think we, you know, we all do it, you know, I try not to, but we all do, because the outer world will never tell you you're enough. The, uh, that is not the job of the outer world. It'll always say, seek, but do not find, right? And so there's an old uh, spiritual with the lyrics, soon I will be done with the troubles of the world, I'm going home to live with God. And I think we have to start to see the trouble differently, that we must see how we participate in a particular trouble differently. You know, how has it worked to handle things the way I've done thus far? Mm, mm, so, so, not so, so, you know. No. But I have these desires, and desire I think is good because I believe that desire is of God. I believe that spirit places desire in our heart to sort of prompt us to move forward, to express more, to experience more, to open ourselves up to life more. Desire points the way for, for, for us, I think. Um, it may be a step or it may be a direction. See, and God doesn't seek to express through you in any limited way. All right? Desire doesn't stand still. It does not rest. 
Right? So what you'll find is if you don't act when a desire comes, it may linger for a while. It may linger for a while. But if you don't say yes to it, if you don't take a step with it, it will go somewhere else. And somebody else will express that. How often have we said, boy, you know what would be great over here? You know what would be a terrific place? You know, this corner needs pizza. God, a pizza place on this corner would do phenomenal. Right? And you say that and say that, and then one day you drive by and somebody has opened a pizza place there and it is just doing a bang up business. And you say, I had that idea. I had that idea for a long time. Yeah, but you didn't do anything with it. So the universe gave it to someone else and they acted with it. And that's why. Right? So I think we'll see progress if we change our present thought, our present word, our present deed for better. You know, I think we always have to pay the price for what we want in life. We learn the spiritual laws, and then we tend our own consciousness. That's how we do it in Science of Mind. We learn the spiritual laws, and then we tend to our own consciousness. You know, and people say, well, isn't it ever going to be easy? No. Okay, so just take that one off the menu, okay? Thinking that it's going to be, you know, not as long as we're, we're in a physical body. You know, yes, we're spiritual beings, but on Earth, you know, things don't move as fluidly as we would like. Now, I don't think it has to be a complete struggle either, because I think that would be a limitation. But life demands that we grow. And you know, when you plant a seed in the ground, and you water it, and it gets appropriate sun, eventually that seed starts to move upward toward the sun, and it pushes things out of the way. Though that earth that's being pushed out of the way, we could say those are like the difficulties in our life. So is that a problem, that the Earth is being pushed out of the way? Well, no, actually not, because what's going to happen is there's going to be greater growth and greater life because of that. So I think we can't completely escape difficulties, because um, on Earth, I just think there will, there will be some. But how we go through them, I think, is completely up to us. We must remember that, that who we are is greater than any difficulty, who we are as a being is greater than any um, desire that we might have. Uh, in Job, it says, acquaint now thyself with him and be at peace. You know? So it's like, quite simply, think about God instead. You know, just think about God instead. So how do I do that? Well, I say to myself all the time, well, I'm one with God. I'm one with God. Or God is the peace that I am. You know, when my mind is a little agitated, God is the peace that I am. I think to progress, we have to take our attention off the old. You know what I'm talking about, the hurts, the grievances, the resentments. And, and also, please, please, please stop criticizing yourself. And yes, other people as well. If we want to progress, we can't have it both ways. You can't have a foot in the past of criticizing myself and other people and harboring hurts and resentments and all that kind of stuff. And then one foot in the other world saying, I'm a creative spiritual being and I'm going to move forward. You know, to progress daily, wow, it takes some effort. But you know what? I always have to tell people because they'll say to me, well, you want us to do all this spiritual work. That takes a lot of time and effort. Yes, I do. I really want you to do some of this because you know what the alternative is? The alternative is to not do it and people have more chaos in their life, and they don't realize that chaos also takes a lot of energy and effort and attention. You know, when your life is in a messy place, that's a lot of work too. So what do you want to put work into? Do you want to put work and effort, not like it's work, but, but you know, spiritual work and effort and energy into creating something better? Or do you want to put work and effort and energy into mopping up a mess? You know, I mean, we get to decide. You know, and this is why I think it's so important that we're always feeding our subconscious mind the good stuff, the good stuff, you know? So, so ideally, we would stop the worry, you know, the stop the ongoing thoughts of, oh, I'm going to be sick, I'm going to be sick, or stop looking for the evidence of lack in your life or, or why you have a reason to be discouraged. You know, it's amazing to me how often people are rehearsing their demise. Yeah, people actually rehearse their own downfall, and that's going to stop. You know, stop that. You know, and, and what you do is, you, how is you pour in the constructive opposite, is what Ernest Holmes says in our textbook. That when you catch yourself being negative or fearful or limiting, put in the opposite into your mind. You know, substitute constructive, life-affirming thoughts instead. And, and a simple way to do this is just say, peace to my mind. You know when your thoughts are going crazy, when you're just thinking, thinking, and you're on like a jag and you can't get off it? 
what it's a good thing to do. You say, peace, peace to my mind, peace to my mind, peace to my mind. Or when you're upset with something that's going on in your body, just, just think about that place in your body and say, peace to my body, peace to my body. Because your, every cell in your body hears every word you say. So let's live by, by yes and no, yes to everything good and true and beautiful and expansive, and no to everything that does not serve us, that does not support a greater expression of life. We have to remember all the time that that, with, that which is within us is greater than that which is in the world. You know, and so we think, well, gosh, when, when do we feel progress? Always. Every day is better than the day before. I believe that that's so. I believe as long as we're on the planet, our life is supposed to be getting better and better all the time. We say, well, how is that possible? You know, when I was young, I could run five miles. I can't do that now. It's like, okay, so you say, well, thank God you ran the five miles back then. Now what other good experience of life can come to you? you say, oh, but the people I loved are gone. They're not here with me. Okay, but you have the capacity to open your mind and heart so that other wonderful people can come and fill your life. And, and you know, when you raise them up and they'll raise you up. Remember, we still have a ways to go, but I think for each and every one of us, if we looked honestly, we'd say, you know, but I'm making progress. I'm going in the right direction. Let's pray. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> so as we turn our attention inward now, remembering that right here we are surrounded by the fullness and the allness of God, God's infinite loving intelligent spirit is the most true and real thing about us. And so as we join together in thought and consciousness, I speak the word for each and every one of us that we are raised up today, that our consciousness is filled with light and love, and anything that does not serve us, we're willing for it to be dissolved, released, and let go, never to return again. And the way is made clear for us to live a more spirit-filled, spirit-directed existence. I claim this for each and every one of us. And we include in our prayer our family members, parents and children, friends, whoever we're holding in our heart today, we know that right where they are, God is fully present as love, as wholeness and healing, as abundant supply, as creative expression, as every good thing, God is right there. We let our prayer be a blessing in the world in which we live. So all of those things that call for our attention, all of those things that pull at our awareness, we say God's infinite spirit is right there in the center of that, regardless of appearances, because we're trained not to judge by appearance, but by the spiritual truth. And so we claim that spiritual truth is present in all circumstances, in all people everywhere. And we bless our church, we bless all churches. We bless synagogues and temples and mosques and ashrams, all paths to God. And I know we're blessed by being together that there is raising up, there is healing, there is a greater good for everyone, and we welcome it. And so with a full heart, I give thanks that this is the truth. I release this word. I know it's done, and so it is. Together we all say, Amen. <laughs>